Hello, my name is Kaio Giacomini and in this video I'm gonna be demonstrating how I use blueprints and meta sounds to build a dynamic audio system for the sports car in the vehicle starter content. I started by creating two actor blueprints to handle the communication with meta sounds, one for the engine audio and another for the wheel audio, in order to keep the gameplay logic separate from the audio handling. I then went to the sports car palm blueprint in order to take the values I needed to hook up my sounds. I started by writing a function that spawns an instance of the audio engine blueprint as an actor and attaches it to the sports car actor on even big play. The same thing is done with the wheels, using a loop to spawn an instance of the wheel audio blueprint for each wheel the car has, also making sure to position each one appropriately. I'm then using the event tick to pass values from the car pawn into variables inside the engine and wheel audio actors. The engine audio blueprint then takes variables, normalizes them if needed, and passes them along to the engine meta sound asset inside its audio component. There's a lot happening inside the engine meta sound, so let's bring things down. The engine sound itself was built out of RPM loops from a car recording. I split it into separate mixes for the engine and exhaust perspectives to give me the ability to change the balance dynamically. Both perspectives use the same meta sound graph, just with different assets being fed through its inputs, so let's take a look at that. On the on play trigger, it plays a one shot for the car's ignitions, then after a delay, triggers a meta sound graph that deals with crossfading and blending the RPM loops. Inside that graph, each RPM loop asset from the input wave asset array is passed to a wave player. Each wave player then goes to a meta sound patch that takes in the current RPM value and uses it to fade in and fade out each loop within user defined ranges. Back on the wave player, another meta sound patch also takes the RPM value to control its pitch within the crossfade range. This is replicated for all other RPM loops with everything at some in a mono output. Back on the previous meta sound graph, the output of the RPM loop is split into two paths for processing the onload state differently from the offload state. The offload path uses a ladder filter combined with two parametric filters to remove some of the top end and high mid harshness in order to convey the offload state of the engine. The onload path, on the other hand, starts it with a couple of wave shaper nodes to make it more aggressive, using the RPM value to increase the distortion amount. Both paths are then crossfaded using the value from the throttle input. Both the engine and the exhaust are then mixed together using a variable tied to the player's perspective to change the mix between them. I also made another meta sounds graph to synthesize the supercharger wine for the engine by making use of the additive synth node paired with some filtered noise. It sounds pretty strident when isolated but works great in context. Back in the sports car palm blueprint, there's a few other things I'm passing to the engine meta sound. One of them is a function that detects if the player has pressed or depressed the throttle input in order to send triggers to the meta sound. In the palm blueprint, I'm comparing the current throttle value with the value from the previous stick in order to either call a throttle on event when the player presses the button or a throttle off event when the player releases the button. A similar function does the same thing to call an event when the car changes gear. The audio engine blueprint then binds these event calls to custom events and uses them to execute parameter triggers in the meta sound. Additionally, there's another function that counts how many seconds the player has held the throttle button before releasing it. The throttle off event then checks if the value is greater than a threshold in order to call the blow off trigger in the meta sound. Back to the meta sound, the throttle on trigger is used to play an intake sound. Both the throttle off and gear change triggers are used to play exhaust pops, using a random float with a trigger compare node to make it so the pops play only 60% of the time either of those triggers gets called. The blow-off and the gear change triggers are also used to play the blow-off valve sound. The blow-off trigger plays an unprocessed version of the assets, while the gear change trigger is paired with an AD envelope to play a shortened version of the blow-off sound effect, with the aim of mimicking the behavior from a real car. The 
supercharger and the blow-offs then get summed together with their volume and filtering being adjusted based on the player's perspective, making them quieter and muffled when in the exhaust perspective. The inverse happens with the exhaust pops. <laughs> Moving on to the wheels, the car palm has a function to update the values of the wheel while directors in the event tick. I'm looping through all of the wheels in the vehicle using the loop index to pass values to each wheel separately. The wheel audio blueprint then takes those variables and passes them into the wheel meta sound, normalizing where needed. For the meta sound itself, I created a generic graph used as a template to make presets for each surface type. There are two components to the template meta sound, a rolling loop and a skid loop. The rolling loop uses the angular velocity input in order to modulate its pitch and volume. The skid loop uses the skid magnitude input to modulate its pitch. The skid magnitude also gets used to crossfade between the rolling and skid sounds. Furthermore, each loop gets started from a random time with a random pitch to make sure there's no phasing issues between each wheel. The wheel meta sound also has an attenuation setting to spatialize them properly, which is noticeable when driving the engine perspective so you can hear each wheel in the stereo field. Out of the graph, I created one preset for asphalt and another for the dirt surface overriding inputs to change the assets that get played with each one. In order to get surface detection to work, I first created a data class to manage everything. The class is a variable that maps an e-physical surface to a metasound source asset. It has a function called resolve surface type, where it takes a line trace result and uses it to output the corresponding metasound associated with a physical material. The wheel audio blueprint then has a function to update the wheel surface sound. It first checks if the car is moving, does a line trace, then calls the resolve surface type function from the data asset. I'm then checking if the meta sound source the function outputs is different from the current meta sound in the audio component, which in turn goes to another branch node that checks if it's supposed to play a one shot for going over the track bumper or a surface loop. If it's supposed to play a surface loop, it stops the wheel audio component, swaps out the meta sound in it, and starts it back up. If it's supposed to play the bumper one shot, it does another check to avoid machine gunning and then plays the bumper meta sound on a separate outer component so it doesn't get cut short by a surface change. This system makes it so surfaces are easily scalable, since everything is being handled by the surface sound data asset. If a new physical material gets added, I simply need to create a new wheel meta sound preset and map it to the new material in the data asset. To top everything off, I added two audio volumes to the level, one with a subtle auto reverb to help glue everything together and another with a more dramatic reverb for the tunnel, using the priority field to make sure they switch correctly. <laughs> I hope this video demonstrates how I use blueprints and metasounds to create a dynamic vehicle audio system that's fun to drive with. Thanks for watching.